And I'd also like to highlight for our celebration this evening our very special guest from Rupa Publications, the Managing Director, Mr. Kapish Mehra. Thank you very much, Kapish, for joining us this evening. Before we get into a conversation a little later with Kangana Ranaut, ladies and gentlemen and all you avid readers, fans of Chetan, Okay, Chetan is giving us the latest update on Kangana. You're going to find the one Indian girl coming very shortly and joining us in conversation. Just happens to be caught in a bit of the traffic of the city of Mumbai. She's gone past Jogeshwari is the update and she would be down here with the status of Goregao any moment from now. But may I steal the opportunity as I welcome Chetan and as I take you through, for those of you who'd like to know a little bit more about the work of Chetan Bhagat, he is the author of six blockbuster books. These include five novels, which most of you are aware of, Five Point Someone, One Night at a Call Center, The Three Mistakes of My Life, Two States, Revolution 2020, in the non-fiction titles, What Young India Wants, and he also has another novel, Half Girlfriend, which was released in 2014. Chetan's books have remained bestsellers since their release, Four out of his five novels have already been adapted into Bollywood films and have been very successful. May I hear you put your hands together for Chuck Chetan's success through the years. From the reviews, the New York Times calls him the biggest selling English language novelist in India's history. Congratulations to that Chetan. Time magazine has named him among the 100 most influential people in the world and Fast Company USA has listed him as the world's 100 most creative people in business. Most of you have been following his columns on the daily with English and the Hindi newspapers. He's also a motivational speaker and a screenplay writer. And above all this, he lives in Mumbai with his wife, Anusha, she here with us. Thank you very much. And uh, his classmate from I am Ahmedabad with his twin boys in Mumbai, Sham and Ishan. Well, Chetan will be looking out for the family too, very shortly. For the moment, I also would like to hand it over firstly to the Managing Director of Rupa Publications. Kapish, thank you so much for joining us this evening and making it all. 20 times, uh, the pre-order number was 20 times more than the uh, recent Harry Potter pre-order number. That gives you an indication of the success. 20 but this time, I think I have taken a bigger challenge than any other time. And I think you guys will decide that whether I've been able to do it or not after you read the book. So this time I'm writing in a girl's voice. I write my books in first person. So this time I'm writing as a girl in the voice of a girl, trying to get into the mind of a girl. And uh, that's quite difficult for a man to do it. Most girls will say that men don't understand us. Is that correct? Yes. So. And, they, and it is difficult to write a book because A, it is difficult to understand women and uh, then you have to figure out what is going on in women's heads and you have to write a whole book on it. Now the problem is even women don't know what's going on in their heads sometimes. So it becomes very difficult to do that. But I, after having written so many books for 10, 12 years, I finally had the confidence. I felt I can do this and uh, so I tried to make an effort this time to do a girl uh, who is Indian but who is a mix of, uh, you can say, uh, modern and traditional. Yesterday someone asked me, Sir, uh, is this the heroine of your book, is she Indian or is she Bharatiya? Is it one Indian girl or is it one Bharatiya girl? And I thought that that's a very strange question because they kind of mean the same things. But I think what they were trying to ask is, is, is she traditional or is she modern? And from my research, and I did a lot of research for this book, uh, from my research, what happened? Abhi aai nahi abhi. Aare, aare, aare. Kursi hila ala ke. Okay, so my research told me that girls, even girls who want to do modern things, they, uh, traditional values, family values, they still remain very, very important. Uh, for this book, I interviewed around a hundred women. Um, wherever I used to go, I used to ask women. I used to sit them down. I used to say, I, I'm writing a book as a girl. Can you please tell me what girls think? Can you please tell me 
what girls are all about. Um, I would go on a flight. Uh, if I'm on an Indigo flight, I'd go behind and meet all the flight attendants. And I'd ask, okay, what do you girls think? What does your boyfriend think about your job? You know, so they would slowly start opening up and I would know from them. I'd interview uh, in hotels, like any working women especially because my girl is a working woman, so I interviewed a lot of working women. So I do, learned a lot of things there. I also had to do some very strange things uh, because there's a waxing scene in the book. So I thought, how do I write this scene? So I went for waxing. I got waxing done. It's very painful, uh, especially if you've never done it in your life. It's very, very painful. I still have marks to show. I will not show them today. but. Um, so that was quite an experience to do that. And that was just one example of things we guys don't know. We just don't know what women do. That's not, of course, the biggest thing they do. So hopefully when you read this book, you will enjoy it a lot. Uh, before this book came out, we gave it to around 50 people to read. Most of them women, but also men. And uh, we got very good feedback. The girl's first reaction was, I can't believe a man has written this book. Uh, and I hope that you feel the same way. And for guys, the most number one reaction was, so is that how girls think? Is that how my girlfriend thinks? And it's a book which will help you understand your girlfriend or wife better. I think, hopefully. But then uh, you read the book and you decide. Now I've spoken a lot. Now I want to know where Kangana is. Is she arriving? I'll check. You know what? I was going to do some question answers later on. So I think I'll do two, three questions now till she arrives. and then that will save us time later and then uh, I can start uh, the book launch etc with Kangna. Okay, sir. So we'll do some Q&A. Yeah. Ask this Check test. Yeah. yeah. Chetan, to get it all rolling, yeah. one question which is, you know, at the back of everyone's mind, a lot of authors in their own rights writing books. How does it feel and what was your pulse? when your books started getting converted and adapted into Hindi Bollywood films successfully? Well, you know, it was quite something. Um, in fact, the first book that became a movie was Hello. Anybody remember that movie, Hello? Yeah. You remember Sohel Khan? Wow, not bad, huh? So, um, that was not a movie that uh, did that well. But it was my first movie. And how many of you read One Night at a Call Center? Okay, quite a few of you had. So if you remember, there was uh, me in the book in the first chapter. So I remember uh, Atul Agnihotri called me and he said, I want to make this movie. And uh, I'll tell, I, I just want to tell you who will play you. I said, who will play me? They said, Salman Khan will play you. I said, done. You just make this movie. I don't care about anything else. So if you see, hello, Salman Khan is playing me. So he had to keep his shirt on and all that. So. Uh, I mean, but there was one song in that movie, he removed his shirt. Anybody remember that song? Hardcore Salman Khan will remember. What? Bang, bang. Wow, man, that you really remember that. I'll convey to him, I met a big fan. So it was very strange at the first time because I was not from the film industry. I came and uh, I remember coming, coming to the shooting and seeing Katrina for the first time. And you know, if you've not seen um, Bollywood much, and this is the time when there was no Instagram, there was no social media. So you don't see stars in real life. You only see them in movies or maybe some magazines or whatever. And it was such a strange experience to see Katrina there and Salman there. But then lunch break happened and there was a buffet and they were taking food from the buffet and eating it. And then I thought, Are yaar, ye Katrina khana bhi khati hai. He, like, how is she putting dal in her katori? How is this possible? She's it's like, you know, when you're in school, when your kid's in school, and you see your teacher, and the teacher, uh, you don't think the teacher is anything else apart from a teacher. Right? Agar aapki teacher kise din aapko market mein sabzi kharitti mil gai, aray, wale kai, ye kya kar rahe ho, madam? You know, you should be with the blackboard and chalk. How can you be buying bindi over here? So like that I felt and then slowly that that uh, you can say that star struckness goes away and now although I love it that my movies are made uh, sometimes I do miss it because I know now the actors as people and I think that this is so that star thing goes away 
but uh, it is quite an experience. I've been very lucky that so many books have become movies. I've been very lucky all the movies have done well. Let's see how many of you, I mean, I don't even have to ask this. How many of you have seen Three Idiots? Yeah, I mean, and how many have seen Two States? Yeah, everybody. And Kaipoche, maybe a little less. Kaipoche also, um, hello, we discussed. Which else? You know, I wrote another movie which many people don't know, Kick. 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 Kick also you've seen, right? So yeah, and now Half Girlfriend is being made. Today also there was shooting in Bombay. So we'll bring Half Girlfriend to you. And now, so yeah. Next question. Thanks, Chetan. Uh, I brought open. Hi. This question is actually for your wife. For my wife? Yes. So it's how, a how have you changed as a man after understanding the women? How have you want my wife to answer or I should answer? I want her to answer. <laughs> good, good. You do one question. Yaar. Chalo. <laughs> Thoda kaam karo. <laughs> Anusha is here with us. So, everyone first say hi to Anusha. Hi. Hi, Anusha. Chetan's always been very popular with the ladies. Um, Are, ye kab hua? <laughs> no, he has. All our friends are usually always, you know, like, how does he do it? Um, so I think, um, you know, the, the, he, the, he had a lot of fun and I, uh, you know, asking all our friends for their views, giving them particular situations, asking them, you know, how women think. Um, so, no, so it's, um, you know, he's become even. I would say clever huh? when it comes to women. Oh, clever is a very diplomatic word, but yeah, I take that. Thanks. So, what I hear is that Kangana is here already, but because it's a lumbi drive, ke baad, koi bhi bathroom to jayega na. So, just she's just here in two minutes, okay? We'll do one or two more questions. Okay, kindly raise your hand before you start the question. Yeah. Maybe have the mic. Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, sir. Sorry. Sir, sir. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think the book is going to be received in the same way by tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 cities? Because urban women will take away something different. Tier 2, tier 3 will take away something different. Do you plan to have like a change in attitude? Do you hope that this book will change an attitude? Yeah, you know that is something I, good question because I, for me now my books are read across uh, cross sections in tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 cities and this book is a little like a little more high end in that way, in, it's more modern but I'm, the girl at her core is very traditional the girl's doing a very modern job but in her deep mindset she's very traditional. So I'm curious to see what is the reaction in tier 1, tier 2, 3. They have ordered the book. Book is reaching there. But uh, hopefully they will like it. Is she here? Okay. Well, as you're looking out for one Indian girl, I'd probably like to present to you a very special guest this evening in conversation with Chetan Bhagat, Kangana Ranaut. Please put your hands together to receive a very special guest at the table. Indian film actress, recipient of several awards, including three national awards and the Filmfare Awards in four categories. That's Kangana for us. Very savvy with the media, expressing her honest opinions and of course credited as one of the most fashionable celebrities. Thank you very much, Kangana, for joining us this evening. On behalf of Crossword, I'd like to now invite the CEO of Crossword, Mr. Kinjal Shah, to kindly join us and present to our very special guest this evening, along with the author, a token of appreciation. We have a gift hamper from Yellow, which is the premium stationery brand of Crossword Bookstores. On behalf of Crossword, a warm welcome. Thank you very much, Kangana, for joining us this evening here in association with Crossword Bookstores and the Oberoi Mall for the launch of One Indian Girl from Chetan Bhagat. Chetan, all the very best. It's a new stationary line, especially for you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Kapish, thank you. Kapish Mehra, the managing director of Rupa Publications, thank you so much.
Thank On you, behalf friends. of Crossword, I present to you the CEO, Mr. Kinjal Shah. Thank you, uh, Chetan. I think uh, all your fans, all your customers are expecting uh, to read this book. I'm sure you'll get a lot of uh, fillers today. Thank you, friends, for giving uh, this time in patience and uh, uh, listening to uh, Chetan now and then Kangana. Uh, thank you and uh, best, uh, best wishes on the book to Chetan. Our pleasure, Kinjal. Thank you so much. Well, we had a little bit of the interaction along with Chetan. Kangana, thank you for joining us this evening. We'd like to hand it over to you to share a few words. Well, I'm told that you've gone through the book already. And so before we get into the delight of the conversation, for you to just share with us your overall view of being associated with the book launch. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear her? Keep it really can close. Can you guys hear me? OK, so no, I think this is OK. This is OK, right? This is fine, huh? OK, so I've read the book, and I'm sure everyone's going to love it. And uh, it's a very special book. It's a very uh, human take on uh, you know, a woman's life, a working woman, today's girls who are struggling with their professional lives and personal lives. And it's a lot more endearing and a lot more meaningful because it is coming from a man. That's what makes it very special. And uh, I've become a Chetan Bhagat fan all over again after this book. And uh, when I read it, I was, uh, I was in tears. Actually, a few things pushed me to uh, it made me very emotional because they sounded like, you know, like a leaf out of my own <laughs> book. So, my own experiences. So, well, I think we should, uh, I should ask Chetan a few questions and... What know? we are going to do is, uh, rather than make it very boring book launch type, I'm, uh, the plan is, she'll ask me one or two questions, I'll ask her one or two questions, and then we'll try to be honest and answer them. If Kangna feels comfortable, maybe we'll take one or two questions from you guys, but you have to ask nice, good questions, okay? And, uh, and then we'll read a little bit from the book, only a little bit, okay? How does that sound? Sound like a plan? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so you want to ask me first? Okay. Yeah, because I think, uh, because I love the book, I have a lot to ask, and uh, we didn't meet before this because I wanted it to be a very spontaneous conversation. So this book mostly talks about how a woman who's given equal opportunities, like a man, you know, today we are talking about gen gender equality and all of that and how um, we deserve equal opportunity as a matter of fact. But when we give our women that, they are deprived of their basic feminine rights, like love, care, trust, and nurturing, right? That's, that is what the book largely talks about. So I want to ask Chetan that at some point, you know, because he's a married man, he's been in several relationships. Uh, so at some point, did he feel, no, but I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so at, <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm playing an interviewer for the first time. Please cooperate. Okay. No, no, no. No, yeah, I, so uh, did he at any point feel insecure of a woman's success, his woman's success, or he felt jealous or and competitive uh, of his own partner? Or straight away you ask me such a difficult question. No, but let's come to the point. <laughs> you know, no point moving, you know, beating I thought she's going to ask me, how are you feeling today, book launch? She's asking me if I have felt insecure. I think it's a very good question because the book talks about this woman and how her boyfriends become insecure of her success. And so she's asking me, tell me honestly if as a man I have been insecure. Well, I have a very overachiever wife actually. Uh, she's smarter than me and uh, in many ways. And she's also an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, she was uh, working in a bank. And there were points at which she got promoted, I didn't get promoted. There were points her salary was higher than mine. So initially I did get insecure. Initially I did feel that way. But I realized that it's very difficult because she will continue to do well. So how long can I feel this way? Then I thought ki chalo maza hi le lete hai. Abhi tum naukri karo, I'll leave and become a writer. I said, you know, ek aadmi agar apni ego gira de na, to bhoat aage bada sakta hai. To meri ka meri koi ego nahi hai. Aap please naukri kijiye, mein ghar baithunga. 
so that's how i that career switch happened but you are right it has happened and then i check myself uh, especially when i left my job i remember people used to come to my house and say acha to aap ghar baithte ho because writer ka kaam koi kaam nahi manta hai acha books likhte ho to kaam kon karta hai acha madam office jati hain acha acha mrs aapki office jati hai aur aap kya karte ho pura din maine kaha main kahani sochta hu kahaniyan sochte ho baithke so you know i started feeling insecure i said are yaar main kaise main bhi aadmi hu main bhi kuch karu but you know abhi but isn't it amazing that he utilized that situation to his, make a story yeah no to his advantage rather than getting jealous and you know letting the relationship fall apart and uh, not letting the woman go ahead of him it's i think he he deserves a round of applause for this thank you chetan you are our modern shining ab, modern man you ab, are an example of shining modern indian man so we are very proud of you thank you ab kangana ne mujhse difficult question pucha i should also ask difficult no easy or difficult difficult okay so mera bhi bouncer aayega abhi so what i want to know in fact you yourself just said ki you cried at many times in the book because this was a leaf out of your life these relationships this girl has it reminded at least it made you connect to or relate to something of your past now i don't want like i'm we are not looking for gossip here but you are a woman who's working and who is a no, also a woman who's tried to love and be get love like any normal person so where where is where in this book did you feel that it has happened to you has it happened to you that men have become insecure about your success has your success actually been a penalty for you well this is a very it's like uh, ab aapne pucha to hum bhi puche ko pe namak chhidak diya aapne no seriously i think uh, uh, this is a very sensitive topic any working woman would relate with me that when we are not successful when i was doing well and i was dating men more successful than me i felt like i was devalued i felt like i was not given my due as a woman as a partner i was not acknowledged and men behaved borderline indifferent so that gave me more motivation to do well just how it works for men you know like you know a certain woman and you want to be worthy of her right for okay. whatever reason for a for a better companion for a better future for a stable future you know you want to do well for yourself not just for a partner but you just why you want to move ahead in life and be successful we have the same reason as men do like you know so you want to be worthy of your partner and usually for a man it works you know when he acquires a certain social stature and he goes up to the same woman who's not doesn't want to acknowledge him or you know doesn't want to Uh, uh you know accept him it works for him but in a woman's case it works the other way around i've i've felt in my relationship that my success have always gone against me you know like there there is a certain uh okay here's an analogy my analogies are usually <laughs> a bit weird but but i think when i was not successful men behaved more like a hard to please father figure you know like hard to please but when i be became successful they behave more like an evil jealous sibling you know like <laughs> i felt like they will put my closet on fire they were jealous of my fashion sense also you know like everything was about competing with me you know like oh you doing this look at me you know you achieved this okay let me blow my trumpet anywhere any time so it became unbearable so i would say that when i was not successful my relationships weren't so bad because like i said in a in different fathers case there is still a lot of trust there is still a lot of faith and occasional nurturing right but an evil sibling there is loss of desire first of all you feel a certain loss of desire between the you know like you know your couple life you feel that the man is more focused on competing with you proving you wrong crushing you and your ego and completely demolishing you and there is not even little bit trust left so i don't know what what evokes this in a man but it's been horrible after my success my relationship has gone completely uh, for a toss wow so in fact i remember casually chatting with you once and i asked you kangna you are so successful now um 
there's articles about the highest paid actress, so many awards, any award you want, you've got it. Um, what would you have more of today? More success or more love? Well, we want to be successful for love, right? Is that true? Is that you want to be successful for love? That's Absolutely. The there is no other reason to life, is there? Like if a man wants to be an achiever for more admiration, for more love, a woman doesn't have any other reason for anyone to feel that a woman has another agenda behind wanting to be successful or earn money or she's ambitious so she has some agendas you know there's no agenda it's simply for love for more admiration for wanting to be seen as your abilities not as like a 55 kgs weight that you carry right i want to be seen as my abilities my skills like the artist i am you know i want to be seen as my qualities not as the girl like I said, 55 yeah. kgs. You're only 55 kgs. I'm so jealous, actually. <laughs> we are all very jealous of your weight. But uh, so seriously, you would rather have more love than more success. And you're saying you don't have enough love. Kangana Ranaut, the one of the most beautiful, desirable women in the country doesn't have love. Guys, what are you doing? Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> you, you really feel that? Is it because of certain relationships that have made you feel that way? That, that people have let you down or you're not lovable enough or something? Well, like I said, you know, when I wasn't successful, then I wasn't good enough. And when I became successful, I became the, the person to compete with, you know. So where is the time for love? Do you see, like, you know, but um, like I said, there are plenty of men out there. We still have a lot of hope. Look at you. He supports his wife. He's, uh, you know, like I, I think we need more examples like this. And I think when our leading men, when, when an author like Chetan Bhagat is going to write about um, a woman's journey, you know, from a, a daughter's point of view, a mother's point of view, a sister's point of view, it's going to make a lot of difference. And I want to ask you, this comes me, brings me to this question that usually, because I am a certified screenwriter and when I read any writer's work I can tell that whether they have delved into the psyche of the character or not so when I read this initially I like let me tell you like I do not take uh, you know <laughs> women character written by men very seriously and that's why I'm, most my director let me work on my character and flesh them out on my own so when I read this I'm like Kya likha hoga? let me read it you know like that okay <laughs> No, but after I read it, after I read it, I was so impressed and I asked him that didn't, it didn't scare you to enter the psyche of a woman because every writer knows when we are done with the character, there's a part of any character, whether it's evil character, antagonist, protagonist, good, bad child, a part of it remains in us. So how did you get that confidence from that I'm going to enter this woman's psyche, I'm going to have, you know, like even gonna enter her anatomy i'm going to have like think behave like a woman and what if when the book is over a part of her remains in me it didn't frighten you it did actually actually you know i've been wanting to write in a woman's voice for eight to ten years now but i had no confidence because of the reasons you're saying because i didn't just want to write about a female character who's a detective uh, it's not a detective novel it's not a, it's a novel about women by a woman written by a man. And that requires a certain understanding and certain letting go of my, I can't explain the process. I have to let go of myself. I think you guys do it as actors sometimes. If you're working on a good script, you lose yourself. You, you are actually become somebody else. And I think it's a very similar process. This book, I went away. I didn't even, I wasn't even in India. I lived, I wrote most of this book in Hong Kong. I, I shut myself out completely and I thought back at every woman I have known and when, you know, normally women often scold you, they say, Tumhe kuch samaj nahi aata hai. Ya, Tumhe kya pata hai? Ya, you don't understand me. I said, what was she trying to say to me? And I contacted them again and I said, tell me what did I not understand about you? And then I, without ego, without any sense of self, I just listened to her as if she's 100% right. And I did it with a lot of women. And I think over time, I just had to let go. 
today i do feel a sense of loss every time my book comes out you want to hold on tight to that story one last time before it goes out to the world i do i do feel like maybe i'm permanently become a woman little bit after this book which may not be a bad thing you know i felt like getting a pedicure this morning and um, not just that but i think i there is a certain feminine side which i'm not so afraid of now i'm afraid to uh, take on uncertainty i'm afraid to don't be do, don't we love our husband taking care of our babies don't we love our husbands putting nail paints on our fingers don't mm -hmm. we love our husbands to appreciate our haircut he's a perfect husband material ladies and gentlemen <laughs> clapping for <laughs> chaitan no no but kangra you are before we end this you have been i'll tell you honestly you've been praising me a lot and i i i'm now going to praise you for 2 minutes so please please i i know everything that you want yeah. to say no no i it means a lot that you like this book i can tell you i was writing this book and i was super nervous because immediately all the feminists because i'm writing about a feminist girl who's vulnerable who's insecure who wants to hold on to love who takes a while to understand her feminist side and i was scared that feminists will say how can a girl who is a feminist be crying for a man you know how can a girl who is a feminist be devastated by a breakup because a man left and when you read it it's not just you are a big star who read it you're also one of the top feminist voices in the country so to get your endorsement i think it just it's made the book today after that i totally relaxed and i wish you more success it's all heart no no and i wish you so much more success and so much more love may you get a designer made guy who will cater to your every whim uh and uh, and because you deserve it but uh, but no, yeah i have one more question but talk to me about that that you you said you said to me it's the first feminist love story i've seen yeah. it's the first feminist so i have one question which i will actually want to ask i've been meaning to ask Uh, an intelligent man. I didn't come across any for a while, so now that we are here, so what I. What about you? Mean you have not dated intelligent men? No, no, no. For a while. For a while. I okay. haven't uh, come across. So this question I want to ask that there is this relationship I was in, and I was dating this guy who's not an actor. He is a doctor, and for us, though I was a few years ago, I was in my mid twenties. He's a young doctor, but I still made a lot more money than him. For me, it was nice to go back to that. environment where i actually grew up in you know real people real environment it was it was little you know it took me aback to lose my identity like because they were white people he is an english guy for me it was little hard to sort of come to a world where i'm just you know like leading an anonymous life but i still came to terms with it it was hard for him to adjust to my environment though i don't have hanky panky filmy friends all my friends are very humble but every time he'd meet meet my friends he would ask me what did your friends think of me am i some small fry he never spoke like that you know and it was so heartbreaking to see him under that kind of a stress so i remember one incident when we were in london and how your movie star friends suggest you places that to go to you know like one of the best restaurants in the world and all of that so i said that you know we should go here and he googled and he's like i w i don't want to spend so much on food I said I want to go there and I want to pay for it. Can I? Because he liked paying for everything. He seemed okay with that. We went there, we had dinner. It was amazing. When it it came to paying for the food, I swiped the card and everything and he started to get psyched in a very unnatural way, you know, like he would ask me, "What is this waiter thinking about me?" I said, "Do you know the waiter?" And he's like, "No, but even that lady was looking at us." I said, "Do you know that lady?" <laughs> He said, "Why do men do that?" And that was that. That dinner became like a trauma, and I'm sure it was equally traumatic for him as well because it led to a, you know, like an argument and then fight. And and I, I and I cursed myself for even suggesting that I want to pay, you know. But if I can do laundries for him, go back to an anonymous life, be you know, like a major movie star, he cannot come to terms with my environment, even if it is for like half an hour. Why do men do that? Okay. so i'm not going to defend men and i'm not going to make this about men versus women but i do want to tell you one thing just as women are conditioned to be a certain way men are also culturally conditioned you know masculinity is not discussed much it is just 
told a man is told you are what you earn you are the money you make and when you make your money you take care of your woman and that's so ingrained in a man that it for many men it's part of their identity unless you are besharam like me mujhe koi fark nahi padta it's not besharam right like if he's my partner <laughs> I, know, I, know. i mean no, no jokes apart and i think men are told that this is this is what it means to be a man you need to be able to you should always pay in a restaurant and maybe in that restaurant the restaurant even the waiters always every day see the men paying especially when a beautiful girl comes and i think he felt small should he have felt too small no i think if he was secure about the relationship with you he would have not felt small but i think it was not about the money it was not about who's paying it was it seems like this man was afraid to lose you he felt that i am not man enough for her and she like every other woman uh will care that i never pay or i'm not able to afford but then this. how to have relationship a healthy relationship with your partner when you can't always pretend to be you cannot pretend to be a nobody all the all the time right like for how long i can go on with a sort of facade that oh fine i'm just like another girl i am not a movie star no, no, i am not this are. capable person and i do not visit fancy restaurants i cannot go on pretending no. like that's, that's not natural that's the issue at large and that's what the book deals with as well i think so like in some ways we have changed so we have colleges we have jobs we have opportunities that a girl can come from a ordinary background and become very successful whether it's a banker scientist doctor or a movie star but when they actually become successful society the social structures have not changed we don't know what to do with them every man wants a girl who's not more successful than her now what will happen to kangana inke liye aadmi kahan se banega right So no, then, fav- then she is like now saying, I need more love. Arey, what is happening? The moment I start getting awards, my boyfriend start getting insecure. So that's a, it's not her fault. Whereas for a man, when he wins an award, the girl is I expected will, I to. I will organize a party for him. Or party, you know. But so, when I get an award, you know, I became the object of suspicion. That you know, okay, now what's going on with her? You know, so. I, so it's a, that's a dilemma, and I think that's what this book is trying to understand. address that you've made given women the opportunity to shine we always keep saying empower the women there's a scene in the book where the girl tells her mother why did daddy tell me when i was a little child we used to oh, go to oh that 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 line just made me cry i was like you know sobbing like a little girl when i read that it's so powerful so she just says that dad used to tell me bete bade ho ke tum kuch bhi ban sakte ho you can be anything in life and now i'm successful now i'm making so much money my mom is saying you are not even a girl anymore tu chup chap ghar baith ke shaadi kyun nahi yeah, karti because Apni mom pe... because mom tells her that she cannot put her so many zero salary in her matrimonial because yeah. what will where will guys will be... less guys so they are making a shaadi.com matrimonial for her and mom says no 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 the girl makes around 2 3 crores a year she says don't put her don't put your salary then we don't get good boys So she says, "Mom, what is the point of my achievements if you're going to hide them?" Yeah, exactly, and that's when she says this, and this is, I think, was, is the most amazing part of. The book. And the bankers can hide achievements, but how is Kangana supposed to hide her achievements? <laughs> They'll just read about it in the papers. So that's it. I think on that note, we'll do a very quick read. I don't like to do long readings, and my readings are also like dialogue. So I will read the boys' part, and Kangana will read the girls' part. normally i have always written as a boy so i can guide it because it's a first person boy but this time it's going to be a little different because it's as a girl so obviously kangna has to read as a girl so she'll be reading the girls dialogues and the description and narrative those of you who have the book in their hand page 13 chapter 2 page 13 around the second paragraph the okay. scene is it's a destination wedding happening so the girl radhika has met the arranged marriage guy she is getting married to so she is not in love with him yet it's just a arranged marriage guy who works in facebook in it department um she doesn't uh, like she doesn't have a relationship with him or anything yet and they are in goa and they decide that let's spend some time together so the boy says let's go for a walk on the beach so this is the first meeting with this boy brijesh i yeah. guys see chapter 2 page yeah. 12 
Also, so, also I'll use two voice modulations. Yeah. One so, for uh, Radhika, another for Mini Me, which is she has a voice inside of her, like a, like a nagging, a criticizing. Would you introduce Mini Me, please? So there is a mental Radhika and there is a speaking Radhika. So Kangna will do both. Okay. Okay. So they are taking a walk. Kangna from So You just yeah. Okay. So you just arrived yesterday from San Francisco. Yeah, I landed last night. I wanted to maximize my leave. One week for the wedding, a couple of days after that at home in Mumbai, then Bali for our honeymoon. Used it all up actually. The word honeymoon caused a jolt in me. Mini me woke up again. Honeymoon? After a dozen old Skype calls, meeting once over a day trip, a week in Bali with this man I am walking next to. Will we be naked? Stop it, Adhika. Focus on the moment. Uh, must be tiring, flying so much. I saw you. I'm not tired anymore. <laughs> I smiled. The man is trying. Maybe I should too. Rijesh smiled back. He had innocent teacher's pet eyes. How's Facebook? I had a busy month. Just finished an enterprise project. So much work. Fronted interfaces, backend systems, underlying APIs. APIs? Application program interface. You know, it's a set of routines, protocols, tools for building software applications. How software components interact, basically. <laughs> I nodded, having understood not a word. You have you no idea what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I laughed. I know, uh, not the... Uh, I know. Mm -hmm. Not the most exciting job in the world. Come on, you work at Facebook. It's quite cool. People think it is Facebook, so there's nothing to do. We post pictures all day or something. Oh, I'm sure. It is pretty high-tech behind the scenes. <sighs> Should I talk more about personal stuff? He will happily discuss computer code for two hours if I let him. Radhika, take control. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Rest, you have to read the book. Big hand for Kangna to do this. Is it okay to do one or two questions from people? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we'll do two, three questions from here and then we'll launch the book and then we'll have Kangana has to leave and then I'll be here to sign the books. So please queue up. No pictures, just simple. They'll tell you how the signing works. Check okay, first. question answers. We'll get it started, Chetan. Huh? First launch, then Q&A, sir. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm okay. We've held, a, we've held the launch. We will quickly, just two questions, just two questions and we'll do the launch. We'll have to bring it in the front. Yeah, okay. Lana padega, sir. Wo sir. Wo block ho jayega. Is liye keh Sirf do questions, do sawal. Do, teen sawal kar lete hai, chote chote. Yeah. I've answered many questions, so maybe Kangana can answer a few. Kangana, we're getting it rolling. This time we've got the hard copy books over here. There are also e-books now available. What are your comments on your satisfaction with e-books or with uh, physical books? What's your take on that? Well, I come from little old school. I love physical <laughs> books. The e-books are not bad either. When you're traveling, you can't carry a lot of them together. But it, my eyes start to hurt after a while with the light and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll throw it open. Just one more from the media. Two more from the media. Give them a mic, no? Mm. Uh, I just read the excerpt that was put out. Uh, it is about the waxing scene. And uh, you kind of describe the waxing scene and it's pretty close to real life. And at the end, you say something on the lines of how uh, Radhika would have preferred lashes that they give in Saudi Arabia to waxing. Do you think that's a very dangerous comparison to make? It's just a joke. Because she feels, because she's never had waxing done, so when she gets it done, she feels like she's getting lashes in Saudi Arabia, uh, which they give to us. So it's just a joke. But yeah, it's okay. I take creative liberties, so it's just that. Any questions for Kangana? Okay, one question on the back. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, sir. My name is Gavi. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my nice. question Thank is that uh, you have created a ca you. character who is feminist and uh, free, uh, who is a free girl. So how do you uh, uh, explain the character to, uh, to uh, accept a uh, ma arranged marriage proposal? I just read the book. You will see what's going on. I, I, can't, I don't want to reveal much about the book. Yeah. We'll take one from the right, one from the left now and we'll sum it up. Hi Jetan, congratulations for your book. I have been to two launches before as well and many congratulations. Coming straight to the question. Uh, all your books have become really successful. 
डू यू फील द प्रेशर यू नो इवन एवरी टाइम देर बुक लॉन्च एवरी वन इज अवर इज गोइंग टू बी शू आई डू But this time, after Kangana said she loved the book, I was not so worried. But do you generally but feel the pressure when you're writing? But until she had the book, I was worried. I do feel pressure, especially when I'm writing it and yeah. when I'm taking such a risky subject. I do. Okay. Guys, you have any questions for Kangana? Then yes, she has no. to go. Okay. Ah, uh, Kangana, ah, uh, you being a successful woman, how difficult is it to be in a relationship with another successful man who is from the same industry? Like, how difficult is that? Hmm. like i said you know um, i just explain that equations change when you're not successful enough then you are devalued and when you become successful then there is a competition spirit that creeps into you into both of you and i don't know if it is actually about the profession because like i said i have dated a guy who's not from the same profession as well but there was this constant tension between us every time matter of monies came up filing tax or even one dress of mine how much it costs you know and uh, everything was like as if i was trying to hide just to not you know like literally walking on eggshells not to you know hurt egos but it's very hard um uh, yeah it's very hard to find someone who can hold his own before you when you're so successful kangna you have this That, image i what i've seen in your talks and speeches is like you're this feminist and today you're coming across as really like just a simple girl who needs love isn't it and can you connect the two can you be that and a feminist together because i think well, girls here want to know no i think i i personally feel that how you have given this very beautiful name to feminism you he has actually changed feminism into humanism the first day he came to me he said that there is nothing called feminism it's humanism if you're a human you know you would consider other human as well and as far as a convenient uh, life that i want somebody to do up my uh, laundry and you know um, f- cook food for me and iron my clothes you know that uh, even women need that sort of luxury it's not that we don't you know so in the name of you know um, so i think that name that you've given feminism humanism i completely agree with and uh, i think what i want to tell women is that I think for centuries now women have been exploited in the name of sacrifice that you know um if you are a nice woman and if you are a uh, if you are if you are a fair uh, woman you know you would sacrifice your uh, services in the name of family and children I think there is nothing called sacrifice if a woman contributes to a family and builds up a family together with a man and invest in his career and lets him build his career for their better future it's a contribution it's a full time job if i today i leave my job and decide to be a housewife that doesn't mean i'm sacrif because sacrifice doesn't demand demand anything in return right so i feel housewives are not given their respect every time at least in my experience a housewife asks for money you know she's she's not given for her honor as if you know she's asking for herself and a woman who works and uh, a woman who has you know she is not given that kind of love and care and trust which housewives enjoy so housewives are not given dignity and career women are not given trust and love so i think we today as modern women are very conflicted we we have to decide between um, you know whether to choose either you know but i don't think it's it's um it's any you know uh, rational thinking because if tomorrow i choose to be like today if i choose to raise a family i would want respect and honor in return for my contribution i'm not i am investing the best years of my life into raising a family so i need my respect along with care and love and if i am a career woman i choose not to have babies and i choose not to have marriage or get married not have babies or have babies not get married i still want the same kind of trust just because i can survive in cutthroat competition just because i can demolish people and rise like a phoenix doesn't mean i can't be trusted doesn't mean i can't be loved doesn't mean i am not worthy of uh, mothering my offspring you know it doesn't say none of this so i think it this book in a very romantic way not in a harsh way like i'm i'm speaking like really matter of fact but it's been put in a in, in a story and i think i really appreciate this uh saying important things than actually saying in your face 
When you are speaking, it doesn't feel like I've got a Bollywood actor. It feels like I have an intellectual who is launching the book. So she's India's most beautiful intellectual, clearly. And uh, while it's totally up to you whether you want babies or not, it's your choice. But I hope you do because your babies will be so cute, especially if they have those curly hair. So please, I hope they come to the world soon, and uh, I'm sure they will. Uh, but thank you once again. I think we'll just uh, do the formal launch once. Yeah. Sir, last question. Last sir, question my okay. last question to Kangna is, Kangna, you have always stood for what's right. And recently, Rakesh Roshan said that even when someone is spreading lies about him. Are uh, sir, this is no, not but, the place no, for that. No, but I want to know, why can't Indian men stand up for themselves? He's a 43-year-old son. Why his father has to come for his rescue always? No, for how long father? They will keep hiding behind their influential big names father. He's an adult. He can pretty much handle his own controversies in show business. It's just a simple controversy. Why daddies have to always, um, you know, save their sons? I don't understand this. Thank you very much, Kangana. All right, on that. Thank you very much, Chetan. <laughs> Kindly come forward for the honor of unveiling a copy exclusively out in Crossword. I'd like to invite Mr. Kinjal Shah, the CEO of Crossword, to kindly join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, all you avid readers, big fans of Chetan Bhagat, here we look forward eagerly for the presentation with the unveiling of the life size of one Indian girl. And from Rupa Publications, congratulations to you, Chetan Bhagat. As here we have the presentation at the Obra Mall in association with Crossword Bookstores, One Indian Girl for all you avid readers. Let's say you put your hands together and give a very deserving applaud to Chetan Bhagat. Congratulations, Chetan. Thank you very much, Kangana. Thank you very much, Mr. Kapish Mehra. Very shortly, we'll be also having the signing of the copies and we will give you the directions for an orderly flow for the signing of the copies. Do bear with us, kindly hold on. Kindly note you have an exclusive offer, 20% off on your copies this evening at just rupees 140. You can have your pick. Thank you very much, Kangana, for joining us this evening. Our pleasure to have you grace the occasion of the book launch. We now will progress for the signing of the copies. Thank you. Hey, very much.